treated differently or abused because of who they love is wrong. This is not an issue as you would want to put it. It's well, a very You've been to get yourself into trouble. Mm. Just like President Obama, I think we also need to be able to speak frankly about some of these things. And the fact of the matter is that Kenya and the United States, we share so many values. Our common love for democracy, entrepreneurship, value for families. These are things that we share. But there are some things that we must admit we don't share. Our culture, our societies don't accept. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're watching me from. Thank you so much, kings and queens, for being here. New subscribers, please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, for those returning subscribers, I love you so much. This is the place to be. Now, to be a president in Africa or a leader in Africa, you have to preserve the culture of Africa. You have to take care of the motherland. You have to preserve the society of the motherland. This video I'm going to react on it is a video of six years ago when we had Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta as the president of Kenya and Barack Obama visited Kenya those time. And uh, it was like Barack Obama was ad advocating for gay rights or LGBTQ. But Uhuru Kenyatta stood firm and told Barack Obama on his face that LGBTQ is not an issue in Kenya. And our culture does not support it. We have a lot of things to do. We have a lot of things to fight for. Why are you bringing up this conversation? Bold, broad daylight, face to face with Barack Obama, the superpower. Now, let's watch this video and then we're going to react about it. If you look at the history of countries around the world, when you start treating people differently, not because of any harm they're doing anybody, but because they're different, that's the path whereby freedoms begin to erode. And bad things happen. And when a government gets in the habit of pe treating people differently, those habits can spread. If somebody is a law-abiding citizen who is going about their business and working in a job and obeying the traffic signs and doing all the other things that good citizens are supposed to do and not harming anybody, the idea that they are going to be treated differently or abused because of who they love is wrong. Full stop. Just like President Obama, I think we also need to be able to speak frankly about some of these things. And the fact of the matter is that Kenya and the United States, we share so many values. Our common love for democracy, entrepreneurship, value for families. These are things that we share. But there are some things that we must admit we don't share. Our culture, our societies don't accept. It's very difficult for us to be able to impose on people that which they themselves do not accept. This is why I repeatedly say that for Kenyans today, the issue of gay rights is really a non-issue. We want to focus on other areas that are day-to-day -day living for our people. The health issues that we have discussed with President Obama, these are critical. Issues of ensuring inclusivity and of women, a huge section of society that is normally left out of the mainstream of economic development. What we can do in terms of infrastructure, what we can do in terms of education, in terms of our roads, in terms of giving our people power, encouraging entrepreneurship, these are the key focuses. Maybe once like you have overcome some of these challenges. We can begin to look at new ones. But as of now, the fact remains that this issue is not really an issue that is on the foremost mind of Kenyans. 
Welcome back. I'm so happy. I'm a happy soul. And um, I'm looking forward for our former president or our now president, William Ruto, to be like this uh, guy, his former boss, who was bold, unapologetic, and without any interference. He is saying his mind. LGBTQ or gay is not a national issue in 254 or in most of African countries. We have things to check. We're going to look at education, building roads, economic growth, agriculture, schools. We have things that we need to fight for, not fighting for the gay rights. I don't have anything to do with them. Whatever someone's do and makes him happy, is it? But according to the culture of Africa, according to African culture, according to culture of Kenya, according to black culture, LGBTQ is not an issue to us. But the white people or the white supremacy or the superpowers they want to impose these uh, issues to Africans. They even go ahead and pay so that you can accept the society or the LGBTQ in the country. I saw seven said no. I saw Ghanaian were in the parliament they said no. I saw Kenya here back then the Uru Kenyatta said no. I don't know about our current president because he's more in hustle things, you know. Wherever there's money, he goes for it. That's why he's in hiding. But we cannot be colonized, exploited, took away everything we have, took away our originality. Some of our people are in immigrants in USA, in UK. Their rights are gone. And then in 2024, in 21st century or you want to impose a lot of colonial things to us. And even there is this reporter who told Yuru Kenyatta that you are entering into a problem. You will have problem. With who? See this video. One of the major issues, and it's a holdover from sort of colonial Victorian, is the issue of sexual preference in many African countries. In Kenya, to be gay, the LGBT community is, is illegal. They just want to have equal rights, the same privacy and equality as all other Kenyans do. Is that something that you aspire to for your country? I want to be very clear, uh, 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 there is. I will not engage in a subject that is of no, it's, uh, it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue, as you would want to put it, of um, human rights of this. This is an issue of society, of our own base as a culture, as a people, regardless of which community you come from. This is not acceptable. This is not agreeable. This is not about Uhuru Kenyatta saying yes or no. This is an issue that the people of Kenya themselves, who have bestowed upon themselves a constitution, right, after several years, have clearly stated that this is not a subject that they are willing to engage in yeah, at this time and moment. In years to come, possibly long after I'm president, who knows? Maybe our society will have reached a stage where those are issues that people are willing freely and open to discuss. I have to be honest with you. And that is the position that we have always maintained. Those are the laws that we have. And those are laws that are 100% supported by 99% of the Kenyan people, irregardless of where they come from. So, I. I it's a very you're going to get yourself into trouble mm. because what you've categorically just stated is that this is not an issue for us, for the Kenyan people, yes. and you don't think that the idea of their privacy, their equality, their rights Christian, is important. This is, uh, uh, but it's a global issue it's, right now. It's it's important to them where they are. Why is it I am important to you that it as is president not of the country? Important to me as the leader of 49 million Kenyans, and after, if you want to ask me my personal opinion. What is your personal after opinion? After I finish my process, I can talk about my personal opinion. But as the leader of the people of the Republic of Kenya, I, I represent that which our people are desirous 
to be. And I have no choice, but that is my position. Would you publicly say that people who are LGBT, gay members of the Kenyan population should not be discriminated against, should not be violated, should not be abused? All, all, no Kenyan, no Kenyan should be abused, should be, you know, uh, uh, um, mistreated in any particular. Every Kenyan is protected by law, every single Kenyan. But they also must recognize that their freedoms are also must be taken into the entire context of the society that they live in. Because this is not a question of governments accepting or not accepting. This is a question of society, right? So currently, accepting. it's a legal process. Yes. And that legal process is based on the society that you live in. And that's why laws are made. So I think that's all I have to say about that particular subject. If I say no on LGBTQ in my country, whom am I going to have problems with? It's Africa. It's our country. But that shows me how system is in control. That shows me how the country is under siege. Africa is under siege. Because we are given laws that are not abiding with our culture. We are, we are given laws to pass that are not of our interest. We have Africans, a lot of problems we have to handle. It's not time to sit in the parliament and discuss about LGBTQ. So we don't have to talk about it. But the fact that Obama was here in Africa, in Kenya, and he talked about it, is an issue to them. But I am wondering, why is it an issue to them? And when and they are not living here, they have their own countries there. Yeah. So that shows me how the white people want to be in control of everything, how the U.S. want to be in control of anything. That shows me how they are imposing their rights, their laws to us. They want to us to follow their laws. We are black people. We are Africans. We are the origin of motherland. We are all the origin of humankind. We are the first people in the face of the earth. This is how they did by imposing a white Jesus to us. Now everyone thinks Jesus is white. Everyone thinks Satan is black. Because of their narrative, they have kept in the minds of people since a child is born up to now. He's being uh, corroded. He's being brainwashed with a narrative of things that are not for us. So we are fighting for the best culture for Africans. We, want, we don't want to lose our culture. We don't want to lose our resources. We don't want to lose our dignity because if a man loses his culture in Africa, you have lost your dignity. But we are preserving our dignity because we are the people of the motherland. I know you have some things to say in the comment section about this video. It, it, it caught my ass. It was six years ago, but it is important to know what Uhuru Kenyatta told Barack Obama back then. And it boldly face to face without any contradiction that your man, no, we're not doing this anymore. Now, as the youths of Africa, as uh, I've seen Ibrahim Traore saying something about uh, preserving the culture, I've seen a lot of presidents who are talking about culture. I love how seven handles issues. I don't like how you do, but I just love, I don't know. I like how he handles things, but I don't love the fact that he's on this seat for so long. Uh, try to give people a chance to show what they need to change because we need changes we need changes now I, i'm gonna leave you to tell me in the comment section which other things that you think the white people has imposed to us black people or africans and we have hold on it which other things do you think that the white supremacy or the colonial are in it because some are saying christianity is not our thing but i believe christianity was there even before the white people came to Africa, because even I was read, reading the letter of uh, uh, King Leopold II, he was saying that, go to Africa, they know bad and good, they know God, they know Zambia, they know this, but go and tell them about this. So, Christianity was there, I believe that. But, the issue of laws and rights of the United States people are not the same with us. Their problem and our problem is totally different. So, 
a president cannot come all the way from US and come and tell me here what to do. We are a Soviet country. We are a republic. We vote for our rights. We vote for the constitution. We voted for the people. We voted for the constitutions. We pass laws ourselves. But again, I came to think that these laws that are being passed in the parliament are not for us. Some of them, we don't know about it. Some of them are laws that are created by the white supremacy. So we have laws in our countries that are not our laws. We have issues that are being brought on table by the white people so that they can control the system here. And whenever they get a puppet on the seat, whenever they get a puppet president, they, they are like, yo, do this for us. I will pay you. Right now, William Ruto is quiet about the LGBTQ things because he was asked and he never answered yes or no. The minister of US came to Kenya. He gave out some handout. And I, am, I believe the handout was because of this bill. And there's a time we will see about the bill is being passed without any public participation. Each and every bill that needs to be passed in Africa has to have public participation because we are the people, we employ you, we employ the leaders, we employ people in the parliament just to control for them to go and turn against us. <laughs> Where are, we, are you watching me from? If you're watching me from Ghana, South Africa, if you're watching me from Ethiopia, Somalia, if you're watching me from Canada, Japan, anywhere you are watching me from, tell me how much damage the white people have done to your culture. How much damage the white supremacy has imposed to us Africans. Whenever you are in that your country here in Africa, what things you see and you say this is not our thing as Africans. What things you see and see this is not the thing of black people? Tell me in the comment section. Because a lot of damage, a lot of cultural damage, a lot of anything, we trying to copy the Western people and we are leaving our originality, our identity as the black people. We are leaving our identity as the indigenous people, the first people in the earth. So this is because of the white supremacy. We have a lot of things happening that is not our thing. But you know what? We need to find leaders who are going to fight for us. We need to find leaders who, you know, they're going to say, yo, we want our country back. Let us do it our way. Let us do it Afghan way. Instead of having puppet presidents anywhere, like they are like given small token and then they're sellouts. I've never seen a black person, I've never seen a president from Africa going in these Europe countries and telling them, yo, you need to do this and this, you need to do this and this. Why? And yet we are the motherland. Yet we have everything they need from us. But we cannot speak in front of them. They are the one controlling the narrative. Because we don't have unity. We are disunited. We don't talk with one language. Everyone on his own. That's what is happening in Africa. Tell me what you think on the comment section. I am the Kenyan Beast, of course. We are doing it the African way every day, every time. Until next episode, peace be with you.